it's Linda here at Papercraft with Crafty and today I've got this project for you and I think you can see from this that it's actually quite a colossal gift bag um, and I have used some of the beautiful new Sweet Soiree designer series paper from the 2018 spring summer catalogue and I have to say that the Sweet Soiree, pa um, Soiree papers are probably my favourite and probably the nicest papers that I've seen since I've been a demonstrator which is coming up for well it's four years now um, so I just love this paper and I wanted to showcase it for you and I think you're going to like the size of this bag so I'll just give you these dimensions I'll measure it here so it's actually eight and a half inches wide and it is two and a quarter inches deep here and it is about seven and a half inches tall so it's a really really decent sized gift bag yeah so I'm really pleased with how this has turned out um, I hope you like the look of it um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial it's a really nice easy bag to put together but it's actually quite strong it's got a nice reinforced base here um, and the sides are made from cardstock okay and I just think that these little handles are lovely. Okay. Okay, so I think it's really neat looking. Um, so I'm calling it my my tote bag. Um, so I'm going to pop it to one side and I'm going to show you how you can put one of these together. So thanks very much for joining me here today. Okay, so you need two pieces of DSP. This is Sweet Soiree. Um, and they measure 12 by 8.5 inches and on each piece on the long side you're going to score at 2.25 inches and at 10 so do that with the other piece 2.25 and 10 Okay, and you need two pieces for the side. Okay, so these pieces measure three and three quarters by nine. And on the short side, we'll start with that first. You're going to score at three quarters of an inch. Then you're going to notch at one and seven eighths of an inch, like that. And then you're going to score at three inches. And then we're going to turn it, then we're turning it this way so your notch is over here and you're going to score at seven and five eighths of an inch. And we're going to do that on the other piece. So scoring at three quarters of an inch, notching at one and seven eighths and scoring at three. Turning it so your notch is here and then you're scoring on the long side at seven and five eighths, like that. And this is now where you're going to need a steel rule, something with a straight edge. Okay, so working on this piece first, I'm going to score from this point here to the center of the notch up here. and then back down to this corner here. Oops. Like that. And the same with the other piece. So now I'm going to take my snips and I'm going to remove each of these rectangles on the edge and I'm going to take a slight wedge from that bit there. Okay, so you've got like a slight wedge cut there. So again, remove this one and a slight wedge from there. And we'll do the same with the other. OK, 
Okay. I'm then just going to take a bone folder and just going to burnish the diagonal lines. And also the straight lines. So that's one piece, and the same with the other. So that's what they should look like. Okay those to one side for a minute. I'm just going to bring back in our other pieces of DSP. Okay, and we're just going to very, very gently burnish, we're just going to gently burnish the score lines, which I can barely see here. So let's just do that. Just very gently. Okay, so what we need to do is find the two widest parts. Make sure I've got this right now. So we've got one end which is slightly wider, scored slightly wider than the other. Okay, so we want the widest end and we want the corresponding widest end to overlap that. And what we're going to do is stick those together like that. Now I'm going to be using glue for mine. Okay, so I think what I'll do is I'll apply the glue to this piece. Some in the middle, and we're just putting these together like this and folding this down. I'm just going to hold that in place whilst the glue sets. So, whilst that's setting, I'm going to look at the opposite ends now here. And what you want to do is take some scissors, and you just want to take a little wedge from this section here and this section here and the same on the other end oops didn't do that very well try again right okay so I'm just turning it like that now and what you're going to do is you're going to take these pieces and you're just going to stick them there. So I'm going to put some glue here and down these panels here. Just finding the edge there, like that. Sticking that down firmly. And you're going to bring this side up like this. And you're going to stick that and just hold it firmly there like that whilst it sticks. Bring the other side up here like that. Okay. And just let that go off 
before you start joining on the other pa the other side. Okay, so you just want to make sure this is nicely stuck down here. Okay, so that's one side done. And we're just going to repeat that process on the other side. Okay, so I'm just going to fold that out of the way. And this one. So hopefully you can see I've got a really big project here and very little room in which to work. Okay, so anyway, I'm doing that with it. And we're just going to stick the other one down now in exactly the same way. So just going to pop that right on the edge of the base and press it down. And then I'm just going to stick these sides on. So we'll work on this one first. You can use double sided tape if you wish, but I just find this is fine. You do get a little bit of wiggle room, so if you stuck it slightly wrong, you've got a little bit of time in which to stick it again. Right. So I'm just going to hold those now in place and let that go off before we go on to the next part of our project. Okay. And what you'll find now is that these areas here fold in really nicely on themselves like that. You can see your bags coming together really well. So whilst those have been sticking, what you now need to do is put plenty of glue on these pieces here. So I'm just going to put absolutely plenty on. So I'm going around the edges first. And you're going to make sure you've got loads in here. This is where the handle is going to be. Um, and you really want to make sure that this paper is stuck down fast there. Okay, so just taking that now and folding it in and pressing it down nice and firmly like that. Okay, and we'll let that dry off also. And do the other side. Fold that in and press it down. Now you want to make sure that this part of the project is absolutely dry before we go on to the next step. So just give yourself a little bit of time to make sure that all of that glue has gone off and we're ready for the next part. Okay, so for the next part you are going to need what I have used. Oops. I've used my two and a quarter inch circle punch, okay, and I've also used my layering circles and I've taken the largest plain one, okay, so that is the largest one in the pack and we're going to be using that one. Okay, so what we want to do, or what I like to do, is take my ruler and a pencil And this is eight and a half inches, so half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. So you're just going to take your ruler, and make a mark with your pencil at four and a quarter inches on that side and on the other. And this is just so you can use it as a guide because we're going to punch out a circle now. Okay, so using that point there as my guide, I'm going to take my two and a quarter inch circle punch and I'm going down not quite halfway, just before halfway, and I'm eyeballing this and I'm getting that as close to the centre of this circle as I think is accurate. And then I'm just going to punch. A little bit of brute force needed there. When I did my prototype I used a slightly less thick card or DSP 
So just going to take that now, not quite halfway, that's in the centre roughly, turn it over and punch. Okay, so you've now got that. I've now got four little scrap pieces of card here and I'm going to take my punch again and I'm going to punch out four circles. So one, two, three and four. Save those bits for later, I'm sure we can find a nice little project for them. And then it's going to be a question of using that large plain circle die. So taking it here and what you need to do is position it around each of your cut out circles <clears throat> and you want a nice even border and then you just need to run that through your die cutting machine. So in my case I'm going to be using the Big Shot. Okay, so there we go, I've got my four circles, just going to bring my box back in, or my bag back in now. And what we're going to do is take one, and take our glue, and go all the way around. Okay, and then I'm just going to cover that punched circle, or semi-circle, that's there, like that. Turn this over, take another one, okay, and just going to do the bottom half like that because we've already got some glue around here. So I'm just going to take that now and marry that up like that, okay, and just pick it up and make sure that the circle is sitting nice and flush against that one there. Okay, so that's one handle, nice and easy, and we just want to do the other side now. So just remember with the first one you take your glue all the way around. Pop it on there like that, flip it over make sure that's properly in place. There you go. And with this one, putting a little bit more on there. And with this one you just want to go halfway round. Like that. And then just do that. And make sure it marries up nicely here on the front. Like that. Okay, so I'm going to let that go off and you just end up with a really, really nice tote bag. Okay, so there I hope you can see, it's really difficult working in a confined space, but I hope you can see just what a beautiful gift bag that that does make. And it's really quite robust, robust and strong as well. You've got this nice thick double base on it. Okay, so I'm just going to finish this off with a pretty bow now. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and I've made myself a double bow. <laughs> I was quite pleased with this. I will show you how to make one actually because I think I've just about mastered the art of it. But I'm just going to take that and I'm going to add some glue dots and pop that onto the hair. So I've got plenty of glue dots. Make sure my little bow isn't going to go anywhere. And I just think that that little double bow looks so nice and so elegant and sweet on there. So that is my large tote using the beautiful Sweet Soiree designer series papers from the new spring summer catalogue. I did say I was going to show you how I did the bow so actually before I bid you goodbye I will quickly do that. It's 
So what I'm going to do, I've got some old ribbon here. Pop that to one side. So I think you need something round about like, I don't know. We well, need a good length. So probably something like 20 inches, something like that. Just so you give yourself lots of wiggle room. So what you do, my hands are all mucky now where I've been using lots of glue. Okay, so what you do is you hold this here like this. Okay, that bit there on that finger. This comes across here like this goes under, so you're doing like a figure of eight, you're bringing it back over like this, okay, and then that goes under there, then what you're going to do is take this piece here and you're going through that hole that's there, like that, okay, bringing this round, and then you see you've got like this loop here, so this comes around here like this and goes back under this loop here and then you pull it you start to pull it nice and tightly like that okay so you've got a little bit of room there and when you've got it fairly tight you can just slip it off your fingers like that this comes down here like this and you can see you've got a double bow and you can actually mess around with it a little if you wish okay just play around with it. But basically, that is how you make a double bow. So I'm going to take the scissors, snip and snip, and I've got myself a nice little double bow there which I can use on a future project. Okay, so that is that. So I hope you've enjoyed today's project and I hope you like my tote bag. Um, if you haven't already done so, I'd be really grateful if you hopped over and subscribed to my blog, which is at www.papercraftwithcrafty.co.uk. Um, there I will post my project together with a supply list of everything that I've used to make this project today. And there is a 24-hour online store where you can hop across and purchase anything that takes your fancy. Okay, so thanks very much for joining me today and I'll be back with another project for you very shortly. Bye for now.